What's up, everybody? Welcome back. My name is Chris, and this is my Bloodborne lore. So, in the history of Yarnum, right now, took all the history of it, we're at the point where the Healing Church has Lawrence at its head, and they've been going through these multiple hunts. And what they're really trying to do is create evolved humans. Um, that's what Lawrence wants, anyways. What the Moon present wants, or Adon wants, he doesn't care if we become evolved. All he wants is offspring. That's what all great ones want. That's the whole point of the one-third umbilical cord, is the whole idea that they just want offspring. There is one great one, and we'll talk about it later, who looks like he's kind of achieved this, and we'll talk about him. So we'll, we'll get there. But right now, as time goes on, um, everyone who has taken this blood has pretty much changed into a beast. Everyone who has um, not listened to the old adage and didn't fear the old blood has um, sooner or later changed into a beast. Some of them it takes longer. And some of this might have to do with maybe having insight. Maybe it has to do with them gouging their own eyes out. Maybe that's something they learn. But that might be something that comes after this. You know, when after Lawrence passes away. Um, that might be something uh, that deals with that. But at this point, nothing has really succeeded in actually creating the evolution of humankind. And time is really running out for Lawrence. I mean, he's he's coming to the point where everyone around him is turned into a beast, except for himself. And if you remember that skull on that altar, um, something looks like he kind of turns into one himself. And and really, before we get there, we kind of need to talk about what comes after him a little bit. Um, and what I mean by that is we need to really talk about the choir real quick. And we haven't really talked about them too much. We don't really know where they came from. There's some items that talk about the establishment of it and and whatnot. But I do believe the choir's kind of been there this whole time. They, and in fact, Lawrence may have led the choir. Um, I can't remember. I want to say there's something that says that he was part of the choir, but I'm not 100% sure if that exists. I have, like, the guide right here, and I'm just too lazy to look at it. <laughs> but... And he, the choir could have existed or maybe came after the contract a little bit, but they do exist. And the choir kind of has a little bit of a different view than Lawrence on things. And it largely in part has to do with stuff that they find, especially later on in the history. I think something I would think is way after Lawrence um, has passed away. But we really need to like just talk about them for a bit. So the Cosmic Eye Watcher badge, and I think I've said this in your previous episodes, but it's a badge of a member of the choir, elites of the Healing Church. The eye signifies the very cosmos. The choir stumbled upon an epiphany very suddenly and quite by accident. Here we stand, feet planted in the earth, but might the cosmos be very near us or only just above our heads? Question mark. <laughs> So they're the elites of the healing church, right? They're like the upper echelon is what I like to say is who they are. I think the game says that too. And the, that they said that their feet is planted in the earth, but the cosmos is very near us. And I, I really, and I think I said this in previous, I really want to say this was like they're really their first idea of the cosmos, right? And I think that has to do when the moon presence um, not really showed himself, but the hunts and things like that, I think, start making them think, you know, not necessarily that Lawrence might be sort of right, but he's not 100% correct in what he's doing. There's something missing, and, and there's something more than just than just the moon presence. There's something bigger out there. And the moon presence is a very small part of that. And I think that's what the choir really resembles. They're like, wait a minute, there's a moon presence. That's cool and great and all, but there's gotta be something else bigger than that. I mean, there's just the moon. There's gotta be other things out there, right? We're on what you would, for what they know is earth. I would call it earth. I don't know what they would call it. But, you know, is there a great one to earth? You know, like what? What is going on? There has to be something else out there. And, and you see the, like, you don't really see the word aliens in the game. But to us, especially like the celestial beings, we look at it and we're like, that's an alien. It looks exactly like an alien. It has, it's glowing. It's got the big bulbous head. It just looks very alien-like to us. But if you really think about it, other than the werewolves, most everything else in this game is very alien-like, right? They're monsters. Um... What's funny is that most of them are beasts, really. Just not the same kind of beasts like the werewolves are. But they're ultimately beasts in general. Not one of them talks to you. Not one of them looks like they have 
any kind of intellect <laughs> at all. Like they don't say anything to you. They don't do anything. In fact, the only time I swore I heard it, and I I died a couple times actually, and I re when I replayed it, the boss over and over again, I swore I heard um, Rom say "Help me." In, in the ROM fight when you fight him in the Chalice Dungeon. Not not the one above ground, the one in the Chalice Dungeon. If you go fight him down there, die a couple times and then really listen and see if you can hear him say help me because I'm pretty sure that's what he says. I had a, I had the first time I heard it, I thought I was going nuts. I was like, this game is actually making me go mad. But then when I died to him multiple times, I went back to see if I could hear it. And I swear he says that. I swear. But that's really the or she says that. I, and that's really the only time I mean and that's not even really a time you could consider them talking to you. They don't, there's nothing that really shows them having this great, like, they do have this great power, but for the most part, you as a human pretty much just, like, trounce right over all, <laughs> all of them, right? Like, you, it's kind of weird, it's, it's really funny because these things are all these great ones and this greatness and stuff like that, and here you are as a hunter that you're playing as the game and you're just, like, running over them with, like, an axe, <laughs> A, a trick weapon right and it, it's just very strange that these things are considered so great and you're just kind of running them over now of course you do have the power of the moon essence behind you of the because he kind of lets you be able to be revived and all that stuff so i mean there's that and you're able to you're able to incorporate the blood echoes so that you can become more powerful so that's kind of what makes you able what makes you able to fight these things um the blood of the ancients like the doll says so it's it's kind of a mutual thing but you know for being so great these things don't seem that great at least to me they don't um and also like the beasts the werewolves they they kind of like there's really no difference than the werewolf and a great one like to me in the whole game there's nothing that seems to be any different um the, you know they're like the beasts are they're you know they're crazy and they're bloodlust but i'm like technically so are technically so are the great ones they're not now, there's nothing there there saying that they're so there's nothing that really says they're great that's what was so weird about it to me there the minute they see you f except for two of them they attack you immediately um the, the all the beasts attack you immediately after they transform or when they're already transformed um rom and i believe rom and um abritus abritus however you want to say that they don't they don't attack you right off the bat. They kind of let you wander around until you hit them. So they seem to be a little bit more peaceful, a little bit more um, more able to control themselves. But I don't know. It's just this weird connection between all this stuff. And it's just funny how it all works out. So the choir, they stumble upon this epiphany. They think something else is out there, right? More than just, than just the moon presence. There's got to be something else. So there's some other stuff that kind of talk about the choir. And you first got the auger of a Briatos, um, remnant of the Eldritch Truth encountered in Bergenworth, uh, use phantasms, the invertebrates known to be the augurs of the Great Ones to partially summon, abandon a Briatos. The initial encounter marked the start of an inquiry into the cosmos from within the old labyrinth and led to the establishment of the choir. So this one's interesting because it's saying that the choir really wasn't established until they they found a Briatos, when they found this initial encounter which they had in the cosmos and this encounter um is described from the great is chalice which says the great chalice is unlocked deeper reaches of the labyrinth the great is chalice became the cornerstone of the choir the elite delegations of the healing church it was also the first great chalice brought back to the surface since the time of bergenworth and allowed the choir to have audience with a toss so um does this necessarily mean it's the first time? Mm, I may, may have been, right? But this allowed them to have that audience. So to me, it maybe means that they knew about it beforehand, and this was now their chance to actually meet with it. Um, however you want to take the word audience to be, whatever that is, either meet with it or be controlled by that that great one or whatever, you know. Um, I think it's different in each case, maybe. But they do say um, one thing was... Uh, let's see, where was Oh, the Great Chalice brought back to the surface since the time of Bergenworth. So, this didn't happen until after Bergenworth was gone, right? Um, since the time of Bergenworth means that Bergenworth existed, it was kind of the place to be, and then whether it stopped being the place to be, or as we see in the game, kind of overrun or locked up and forgotten or whatnot, um, it was after all that right and that's when that's when the establishment of the choir happened so to me it doesn't mean that the choir started out this way it just means that it became established 
after this point. In other words, people started believing in it, maybe, and less in what Lawrence was doing with the blood. But the blood still has a big part to play into things, and and we'll see that as we go. So you got a call beyond. This is one of the secret rites of the choir. Long ago, the healing church used phantasms to re reach a lofty plane of darkness, but failed to make contact with the outer reaches of the cosmos. The rite failed to achieve its intended purpose, but instead created a small exploding star, now a powerful part of the choir's arsenal. At times, failure is the mother of invention. I think this is really a really cool way of basically saying that everything the healing church did led to the beginnings of the choir and what really the choir is it tells us that um the establishment choir uh well it really says that they f the healing church failed basically and the choir used their failures and became used the her church's failures to become what they are basically and i just find it strange that it starts out talking about the healing church and then it ends mentioning the choir it really shows that the failures of one led to the success of the other and and it's kind of just a really neat way of saying all that even though you know it says it kind of blatantly but it's kind of hidden there as a message saying you know these this failure of one is really the success of the other so during the time of Lawrence, when the Moon President was contacted, a, you know, a contract was created. More importantly to some members of the Healing Church, we had contact with something from the cosmos, right? So it wasn't necessarily mo like, you know, Lawrence and them were like, cool, you know, we're going to evolve, we're going to be awesome, blah, blah, blah. But there were people of the Healing Church who were like, no, there's something more meaningful to this. That we made contact with one thing from the cosmos. There may be more, or there could be a whole, you know, cosmos itself could be something. So I think really that's kind of what built the choir up. You know, that's a lot of speculation. There's nothing really to prove any of this, but that seems to make calm. That seems to make sense to me. They really weren't all about communion necessarily when they were going down into the labyrinth. Um, I believe the prospector garb or prospector armor, or whatever you want to call it, really talks about how they were down there not for mere trinkets of hunters and blah blah all this stuff. There was something else down there. And that's really why they wanted to go further into the labyrinth, which ultimately led them finding the greatest chalice later down in time. So they found it, you know, and then I think we'll talk a little bit more about the choir when we talk about the school menses. But this is a little bit about the choir. And the reason why I wanted to talk about them is because something had to take over after Lawrence passed away. And I think that's really what the choir did. Now, it didn't happen right away. It wasn't like, it wasn't like the choir stabbed Lawrence in the back. And was like, now we're the masters. No, I think I think everybody really wanted Lawrence to succeed. He seemed to be doing the right thing for the time being. And I think a lot of people that believed in that believed in him. And it wasn't actually probably for a while before the choir got established. And you see that when you when you go to the altar and you see Viker Amelia. Um, you see, uh, is it Vicar? Vicar Amelia? forget how to say that. I think it's Vicar Million. And you see it when you get the pendant. And the pendant is like, you know, this is something that's passed down over time, over and over again, to the next one, to hold the place of the leader. Which is also weird that that no one is no one is taking the place of Lawrence. Lawrence passed away. And now everyone is just holding a spot till something comes that's just as great as him, maybe. Or someone with just the kind of thoughtfulness he had. Uh, you know, his place isn't really actually replaced with by anybody there's just a head of the healing church now and that's what Victor Amelia is and the people that came before her and then in the memory of Lawrence you know we see that that skull is really beast like it looks like it's been cut across the skull so really who ended up killing Lawrence like is really the question here um, we it looks like he's turned into a beast by the time he dies so ultimately his end comes from what he thought he was doing right by all this blood administration, it ultimately ends up killing him, and he turns into a beast. But, you know, was it a chosen hunter that killed him? Um, could it have been Ludwig? Maybe it was Ludwig that did it. Uh, but it's, but it was definitely a split skull. We do know that it wasn't German, because German inside the dream, um, he dreams inside the dream. It's really confusing to keep all these dreams in mind. <laughs> he dreams inside the dream, and he talks about, he really talks about Lawrence and Willem still. Looks like he would, they were alive while he was alive still. Um, but because he wants them to save him. But we really don't know. And, I, and honestly, I don't know who kills Lawrence. I don't think it's ever stated or shown anywhere. 
who kills him. In fact, I, th I think it's going to be one of, like, the, if there's DLC to this game, I think it's going to be one of the things that's DLC. Like, there's a lot of, like, Artorias kind of stuff here between, like, Gurman and Morons, where you really want to figure out all this stuff. Like, we always, when, when Dark Souls 1 came out, we loved, we loved Sif, we loved um, Artorias, and we really wanted to know more about their story. So I think that's kind of what they wanted to build with Bloodborne. Like, and I and I agree. I like I really want to learn about Gurmon and his background. And I really want to learn about Lawrence and his background and Willem too. And I think it'd be really interesting to delve into that lore a little bit more and see really what kind of happened back then because they don't give a lot about that stuff. They kind of show you the ending result. Maybe they show you a little bit of what happens in the middle, but they don't really tell you exactly what it was like, what it was that was going on. So in all honesty, I don't know who kills Lawrence. Like you could make and you can make a ton of guesses and you could all be right because it wouldn't it really didn't matter i guess the end result is that he's dead so he dies he looked like he turned into a beast that's what the skull looks like anyways i looked at it again and i just can't get over the fact that it looks like a beast i mean sometimes i keep looking at it and go maybe it's a great one but i don't you know we don't really see a skull of a great one really anywhere we just see a skulls of beasts and that's kind of it looked like a werewolf so that's where i'm going with that but the one of the biggest things that so he dies a lot of time may lapse between his death and the choir actually establishing itself that's what it kind of seems like but something has to happen in between there or something that happened maybe before his death um is that bergenworth something happens to it 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 basically disappears as a place of college or scholarship um i think during the time of lawrence it existed uh, maybe not the whole time he existed but it seems like it had to have and one of the connections is that the choir uses stuff from Bergenworth. In fact, they send some people over there. Uh, I think I, Yosefka is one of the biggest examples of that. That there's there's still there's still um, people over there looking at some of the stuff that they found and learning about what they were doing. And the choir uh, garment itself, the headpiece, um, covers the eyes, and it says it's an attestment to the Willem. Um, so they kind of believe the choir sooner or later starts believing less from maybe so much the church or the healing church and more into maybe what willem was thinking <clears throat> so by the time we go through the game right with our character bergenworth seems to be super old it doesn't it, it it's always referred to as an old place of learning but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's ridiculously old um i think by the time we go through it bergenworth is but i think that as the game is going on that it's always been an old place of learning whether you're talking about bergenworth at the time of lawrence or bergenworth at the time when we're playing it's just an old place of learning much like harvard and oxford are old places of learning for our our world right they're old they're just old schools they just existed for a long time now of course everybody in those colleges um still alive <laughs> and they're not going crazy they're not doing this crazy ass experiments that we know of no, i'm just kidding i'm not one of those conspiracy people <laughs> but you know they, they still exist but burdenworth is kind of like that you know there it's just an old place of learning it's just existed for a long time and i think that's kind of what that what that meaning is right but we do know from alfred that um that it, it is decrepit and old and broken down now so by the time when we get through it we do know that um, something has happened to it that it has broken down and something bad has happened now what caused that is really kind of um, a question that's hard to answer and you can say that it was themselves that brought them down um, by the by the time the choir really gets access to it I don't think they're the ones that really did it school of Mensis is too far down for them to be the ones that destroyed Bergenworth. So Bergenworth kind of must have, to me, broken down when they were shut off from the healing church for whatever reason that was. And that's also a very strange thing when you look at it because I think inside the actual um, guide, it says that the healing church is the one that shut them down or shut the doors and blocked them out. But what's weird is the password is on the other side of the gate <laughs> and that guy and doris when you get the doors outfit says that they were two um they were two very like trustworthy people for willem and one of them guards the gate and the other one is the graveyard keeper and it's just strange that the password guy is on that side right it, you know why would you not have guards on this side where if the church was the one 
you know, blocking it off? Why would you put the guy back there? And then why would he be part of Willem's entourage? Why wouldn't he be part of Lawrence's entourage? So it's like very strange that <laughs> these people, like you say the healing church is the one that blocked it off, but you know, why? Like, and the other thing is why? Is it because is it because it's a threat? Is it a threat to the evolution? Is that what Lawrence thinks about it? Is that why he shut it off? And I think there's some kind of truth to that because a lot of the great ones in this game, you have what they say augurs in the game, the augurs to the great one or to the elder's truth. But I believe each great one has kind of its own own augur, of own way of helping you or, or, your, or its own way of revealing the truth to you. And you either have it through like the blood, um, we see eyeballs, but then something that happened to Loran, we don't necessarily know i believe what exactly happened to them but whatever did you know um that happened to them so maybe i don't necessarily think that they used eyeballs maybe there was something else electricity seems to be very important to them so maybe it has something to do with that maybe harnessing the power of electricity or using electricity uh could be their thing their auger right and it brings in these different great ones because it's something that maybe attracts them to us and the opposite way around too so it's just very interesting to note that you know you have one you have one um gray one who likes blood or it's auger or it's catalyst i guess would be a better word not auger because auger and catalyst are not the same thing but like you know one is its blood right and then another great one could be the eyeball thing that willem's doing and that's where you kind of get these different like sects of uh people right the choir it seems like the choir is kind of delving into the cosmos and it seems like it's maybe using blood and eyeballs which is their idea of reaching something beyond what willem and lawrence has found right they're like well if willem you know used eyeballs and lawrence used blood what if we use both <laughs> and see what happens would we get something even greater uh, and the school of menses is using nightmares and the menses cage and like starvation i guess you could say um or maybe multiple things there too maybe they found out uh, a little bit about loran because it seems like electricity is another thing inside their place so it's just very interesting to see these different like catalysts that 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 appeared for each great one you know there's something that's always there for each one and that's kind of where like i think that's why like the contract with the moon essence the moon, the moon present the moon essence but the moon presence was like no i want my kids to survive um i want them to succeed but we can't have this other place who's using eyeballs <laughs> to be interfering with us because that's going to interfere with what i want to do so you know maybe that was part of the contract was to shut burton like that but it's really just strange to see how that how and why that happened because once those doors shut i think willem kind of um you know all the experimentation and all that stuff going on in bergenworth ultimately destroyed it uh especially if they had no way out of where they were it doesn't seem like it seemed like basically they're on the one side of a lake and then there was a forest and then there was the healing church and maybe like a mountain range around them so they kind of got stuck and i think that ultimately led to their death um especially after all the experimentation they were doing and it just got overrun by uh, all the bad stuff that that was happening there and again we'll talk um because bergenworth comes into play especially with rom um when we start talking about when we start talking about the school of menses and a little bit more about the choir because those three things kind of um intertwine with each other and they kind of bring us to the end game so we'll talk about them probably I don't, we'll be there by the next episode we might be there by the next episode the next episode might be the last one so um because we kind of can end it i think pretty soon one of the things uh that we see though definitely for sure is that provost willem strongly believed that eyes on your brain would help humans reach another plane it kind of rhymes <laughs> and he, he also strongly believed the old adage fear the old blood those were two things that you see throughout the game that he agreed with no matter what like he says we need eyes on our brains i keep hitting my mic we keep we hear eyes on the brains and we fear the old blood those are two things you need to do um, if you want to be part of bergenworth college so when you enter the college you see canisters full of eyeballs you see cages with fetuses in it and i think the fetuses in the cage really represent that he was looking for an umbilical cord and if you remember one of the cords and i think it's the one you get from yosefka says provost william 
or Provost Willem sought the cord in order to elevate his being and thoughts to those of a great one by lining his brain with eyes. The only choice he knew if man to ever match their greatness. So his total belief was that, you know, we need eyes on our brains and maybe these cords are the ones that can do it. But to get these cords, we're going to need fetuses. Now, where he gets these damn things from, I have no idea. They look like chicken fetuses, but they're way too big to be like a regular chicken fetus. They, um, it's just crazy looking. Um, could he have uh, Could he have done the same thing? Maybe he found a way to create um, pregnant women or something. Who knows where he gets his fetuses from? I have no idea. Through experimentation, it's possible that they're animal fetuses and not necessarily like pig fetuses, maybe. That's where all the pigs come from, especially in the forest when you see them. So maybe that's what he's doing, and he's just experimenting on those. He's trying to find a way to get this umbilical cord. Who knows? Um, the place is really dark and creepy to really begin with for being, you know, something that seemed seemed like a higher scholarly place, but really kind of in the end is a very dark and, and criminal place. Um, experimental science kind of area but you know this is this one really this item especially the cord really tells you what what we'll truly believe in about especially when you're um, really trying to figure out what's going on so i thought about this especially when playing through the game and really was trying to figure out from humanity perspective like like how do you if these guys are really human, right? They're like one of us, right? They're really, they're really human beings. They're really human beings. How do they get to this point in the world, right? How do they go from, you know, being regular people, you know, living their lives and studying and whatnot, being a church and things like that, to where they are at now, where they're doing these crazy experiments, they're going nuts. And I think really that connection was like throughout the game, you come across that madman's knowledge. And it's just this knowledge about something that's unattainable, this otherworldly truth, this eldritch truth. And, but the key is that it's madman's knowledge, right? So as you start learning these things, you start going crazy because of what you're learning is making you crazy. So if I thought about it myself, I was like, okay, so let's say I gained some insight, right? And I walked outside my door right now and on the side of my building, I just saw a big ass alien thing hanging on the side. No one else can see it <laughs> because they don't have the truth behind it, but I do. That would probably make me go nuts. And then at a certain point, when you get enough people to see the same thing and they're like, yeah, I see the same thing, you could possibly start knowing that, hey, maybe we should try to figure out how we can become powerful or maybe something like it. Because ultimately in the end, if, if something bad happens, like, it's weird because throughout the game we see it and nothing happens so it's like you can't even attack it and it can't it doesn't even well it does grab you and try to kill you i guess that's true so um once you start seeing the power it has um ultimately maybe you start thinking about how you can attain that power as well and that kind of leads you down to the dark road that's happening as we're playing the game or that kind of leads to what happens to humanity in this area it, it's just something i had to connect in mind because i was like how does like the human race itself ever come to this point so and, and it really reaches into the dark side of what human nature is and things like that what we would do for power and what we would do for things of otherly nature and things like that so anyways that's a little spiel that has really nothing to do with lore but it kind of helps you connect with like how could humans end up being like this in the end so it's really the insanity which leads to these crazy decisions and it's it's the idea of learning what they say the truth is right and this truth is what makes you crazy and then and then that kind of leads to learning more truth and then you becoming crazy and then doing crazy things and that's kind of what happens so what is sad is really any place born from madness like this in the game doesn't really last um we see multiple times of civilizations or places falling and you see it throughout the game. Um, we know the Thumerians. We don't necessarily know if their civilization crashed, but they're not doing so hard. They're underground in like a labyrinth. Uh, Loran. Loran turns into a big empty desert area. Nightmare. This is what the frontier. Nightmare frontier. Um, Canehurst. Forsaken Castle of Canehurst. Is not doing so hot. Bergenworth. Not doing so hot. <laughs> Old Yarnum. Not doing so hot. In the area you're in right now. Uh, Yarnum itself. In the nightmare. Not doing so hot so there's a lot of these places that just just isn't working out <laughs> and it seems like uh these like i said these places born from this madness just just doesn't actually end up being um as great as i think what a great one a great place or a great one should be right 
So as you play, you know, Yarnum is failing as well. The great ones really don't care. They don't, they don't give a shit. They care goddamn less <laughs> about any of this because what they really care about is reproduction, survival, evolution of themselves, not so much of us. What we're trying to do is use them to reach that evolution of ourselves and ultimately become the next great thing. So that's kind of my little excerpt about all that, you know. It's a little bit off to the side, maybe more of a tangent. So getting back to Bergenworth in itself, uh, we look at the Lunarium Key. In his final years, Master Willem was fond of the lookout and the rocking chair that he kept there for meditation. In the end, it is said, he left the secret with the lake. So Bergenworth probably failed, um, like I said, due to the madness of the people inside of it after being locked up and there's nothing really else that can be done. They just kind of, kind of just disappeared from what they were trying to do. Who their great one was and all that stuff is kind of, we don't really know, actually, right? Um, it's, you could maybe say it's something like Rom, but not Rom itself, because Rom says it was kin to it, so it could be something close to it, but not necessarily because Rom was empty-minded, um, didn't have something inside of him. And I, I also think Rom is um, from another place, and we'll talk about that later. It fits better in there instead of now, and because it's something that happens, I think, later on. I don't think it's necessarily something that's actually destroyed Bergenworth to begin with. But, you know, Master Willem left his secrets with the lake. So, throughout the game, you get these ruins, these lake ruins, that uh, you get a lot of them, like a ton of them. <laughs> they're, I think out of all the ruins, they're the ones that are, like, the most. And they have pretty much the same description on each one, with a little bit different here and there. But, you know, they say that they're the guardians of the sleep, and that they're the augurs of the, of the Eldritch Truth. And you have to you have to surpass those and get what is yours basically is what they say and it's just interesting you know it doesn't mean you have to wake up from this dream or understand that it's a dream and that this is the thing that will make you reach to where you need to go and it's kind of what willem's pointing at is saying this is where you need to go to um succeed in what you want to do to become the next thing next great thing and remember that's really all Lawrence and Willem really wanted is just for you to be the next not necessarily you but for the human race to be the next best thing so um and I think w Willem was afraid of what Lawrence was doing and 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 he didn't really like it that's why he kind of like I was like you know you betrayed me and Lawrence was like nah <laughs> nah brah I just found a different way to do this so they kind of you know separated um up and I just think it's funny that if if Willem was the one to lock the door, he locked it stupidly because he gave it the password. Lawrence would know how to get back through it. So that's why I really think Lawrence had to be the one that locked up. And remember, Fear the Old Blood really isn't out of the realm of the Healing Church's adage. Ish, at, the Healing Church adage is really seek the Old Blood, but it is fear it too, as long if you're not smart enough to handle it. So. Um, if you really look at what, like I said, Alfred says, he says, but today the college lies deep within entangled wood, abandoned and decrepit. It. And furthermore, the healing church has declared Bergenworth forbidden ground. See, so you see, the healing church has declared Bergenworth forbidden ground. It's unclear how many of its scholars remain alive, but only they know the password that allows passage to the gate, which isn't necessarily true. Well, Lawrence was once a scholar, so that's kind of true. Uh, in the guide, you you know that guy you fight inside of Bergenworth when you get there? He's supposedly one of the last scholars um, to exist, which is weird that he's even there and he's alive. <laughs> um, seems like age isn't really a big thing once you're in the dream. You kind of just exist once you're there. But that they only are the ones that know the password through the gate. So no one from the Healing Church would know it because their adage is something completely different. Um, just very strange. Yeah, the Healing Church locked up Burnworth. There were two loyal servants, right? The gatekeeper and the and the guy, the gravekeeper and the gatekeeper. You learn a little bit about doors because you get his armor, but you really don't learn too much about the guy who's guarding the gate. Uh, it's just very interesting the things that kind of intertwine here and how the gates actually close. <clears throat> But Bergenworth is a very mysterious place. Uh, a lot, I think, one of the more mysterious places in the game. It, and I think it's meant to be that way. Uh, there's not too much to say exactly what went on. It's just an inference, right? What's going on? Um, one of the biggest things, though, is like I said, I think Adon is really afraid of what's going on there. He doesn't like it. it might, like I said, it might have been part of the contract 
to keep them away or it's something that later on Lawrence didn't want people from Yarnum to be messing with things you know of that nature maybe he was afraid of what the choir was going to do um, even though maybe may have been part of it he just didn't like the idea of it uh, I, and I was talking about how there was one other great one that kind of seemed like it achieved its ability to reproduce and I think that's a uh, I think the game says Amidala, but it's Amygdala, if you really want to say it the proper way. Uh, you see them everywhere, right? There's not just one. Every other great one, there's really just one, except for maybe the ones in the Chalice Dungeon, so two at the most. Um, you fight one. You fight one in Chalice Dungeon, but then there's like a bunch just hanging around buildings all over the place. It really just kind of so did, so did Amygdala like find a way, you know, to uh, reproduce? It Was it the School of Mensis that helped them out? Or was it Loran? Because that's where we find the main guy at. <clears throat> was it the destruction of Loran that helped them finally figure out how to reproduce? And this one great one was able to do it. Even though you have one of the great ones and all of the other ones are considered lesser ones of it, um, it did seem somehow, it seemed some way it was able to produce. And maybe it's lesser because it has human inside of it and not just necessarily greatness. Uh, very interesting brings you kind of towards um, what happens now with the choir what happens with the school of Mensis, what's going to happen um, with old destroyed Bergenworth and then kind of leading to the end game and why the moon presence doesn't like you or does not doesn't like you doesn't like doesn't like um Murgo for some reason and who is Murgo who is this guy <laughs> so I kind of leads the end of this episode uh, I think it was probably good good amount of speculation in there maybe not as many facts as my other ones but i just kind of had to make this little bit of a connection before i jump to the end and i think uh it's just um very very getting very very interesting so with that guys um thank you for watching sorry this episode is super late i seem like i apologize every episode now now about these being ridiculously late but i'm not gonna make any excuses i'm just the worst youtuber out there <laughs> as it goes to making videos um as of right now i think there's gonna be a game coming out uh, on tuesday uh what april 12th and i might be playing that um doing a little video on that game so we look out for that uh but guys i am definitely out of here and as always peace